the world system and the age, and the age has the character of this world, that world system and the age can negatively affect the way we work together with other believers. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we're looking at the ministry of the Spirit in the life of believers. The Spirit wants us to function together in unity. He wants us to work together. He wants us to work together as a team. He's the one that has baptized each one of us into the body of Christ. And according to Ephesians chapter 4, he is working to produce unity between believers. And uh, there's a lot of things that, that interrupt that. And one of those things is the world system. And so um, when we talk about this age and how it affects in the, in the world, we've been spending some time looking at how we, how we do ministry and how the church functions. And stop and think about it. How the church functions really is a reflection of how you and I as individual believers function. If we all are functioning the way God desires, well, then the church that we're a part of should be functioning the way God desires. But if we ourselves have set different standards for how we're going to function, how we're going to do ministry, whatever we might call it, if we set different standards than God does, well, then we're going to apply similar standards to the church. See, it starts on an individual level and moves into how we affect, the, how we operate within the church. In Paul's closing letter, this is his last letter. Um, he is under, he has a death sentence. He has a period of time at the end of this, according to Roman law, in which it allows uh, the, the ruler, the governor, to, um, to um, release him from the sentence of death. And it's during this period of time we believe that Paul writes this letter to Timothy. And as he's closing this letter, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10, he's going through the different people that he's been involved with. And he says, for Demas, Demas, we're going to stop right there. I want to notice in Philippians, or Philemon, excuse me, verse 23, it says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, he greets you, as do Mark. Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow or fellow workers or co-workers. Demas is listed among the co-workers. This is probably being written five to six years prior to 2 Timothy. Colossians chapter 4, likewise, uh, he's writing to the Colossians. He says, Luke, the beloved physician, sends you his greetings. And also Demas. Demas does the same. So Demas is with Paul in Colossae. And so we have Demas has been a worker with Paul in these settings, but at the end of his life, he says, Demas deserted or abandoned me since he loved the present age and he went to Thessalonica. And then he talks about where some of the other ones that have been with him. Crescens is in Galatia. Titus is in Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. In other words, some of them had ministry things that, that um, Paul had sent them on, but here he's saying Demas. It's the only one that he explains what Demas, why Demas isn't with him. These others are in these locations, but Demas deserted or abandoned me because he loved the present age. Now, a lot of your Bibles are going to say he loved the present world. They're going to translate the word age, I own. They're going to translate it cosmos, world. And it's not world. It's the age. And we have talked about this before in our studies, but the significance, we could look at age, and there's a number of things that we could say about it. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, instruct those who are rich in the present age. Use the exact same construction, present age, the now age. And so many people, when they read this passage over here in uh, 2 Timothy 4, they think that, oh, Demas fell in love with getting stuff, with having stuff. Demas... Is, wants to be rich. He wants to be successful. He wants to experience the best life ever. And maybe that's what he's doing. But because Paul does not say the world in particular, he says the present age, and certainly in 1 Timothy 6, he uses this of those who are rich in this age. I think it's more likely that he's talking about a reason that Demas went to Thessalonica. Why would he have gone to the city of Thessalonica? Why would he have returned to that city? 
Thessalonica is where Paul began to receive his first resistance for the gospel. Now, you go back to Philippi and you'd say, well, in Philippi, he was beaten. Why was Paul beaten in Philippi? Paul and Silas were beaten in Philippi because they cast a demon out of a girl. It wasn't because of the gospel. It was because this girl continued to kind of undermine what Paul was saying. And so he turned around and cast a demon out of her, freed the girl. But her masters became very angry because they were losing their livelihood. And so they brought them up on charges that they were causing problems that were contrary to Roman custom. And that's why they were, it had nothing primarily to do with the message they were preaching. But it's when they arrive in Thessalonica, this is when Paul begins to run into conflict with the message that he's preaching. And he runs into problems here. The problems pursue him on down to to Berea. He kind of takes another tact at it when he gets to Athens. And we've already looked at that, that that was not the way God wanted it done. And he still has problems there in Athens because the people did not like the idea of resurrection. And he gets to Corinth and he also runs into conflict in Corinth. And Paul becomes afraid in Corinth and uh, stops speaking. And the Lord has to appear to him and say, Paul, quit holding your tongue. I've got a lot of people left in this city. You need to get back out there and get back to work because he's running into conflict with people over the message. And Demas goes back to Thessalonica because this is where he's going to, well, resort to the methods of the world. Where is the wise man? Where's the, as we've talked about, where's the philosopher? That was Paul's problem in Athens. He tried to resort to philosophy and it did not work. There were some people that believed But the people on Mars Hill where he battled with them on philosophy didn't work. Where is the scribe? That's the scholar. You can pile up tons of evidence to prove something is true. But in the end, it's not scholarship itself that actually is going to win someone to truth. Where is the debater of the age? Taking this idea of philosophy and scribe... Putting this down here, it's a person that in the age believes, you know how we arrive at truth? We sit down and we have a debate. We debate this back and forth. You don't debate God's truth. God's truth is what it is. It's the truth of God. He's the God of the universe. He said it. It's what he meant. It's true. It's not up for debate. You're not going to debate to try to prove your view is better than what the world says. The world is never going to accept the truth of God. They're never going to accept the truth of God by means of a debate. Paul says over here, that is, and if you remember this, and I keep coming back to this, it says in verse 21 of 1 Corinthians 1, for since the wisdom, in the wisdom uh, of the world, a uh, wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom, through its wisdom did not come to know God. God was well pleased, very important. He was well pleased through the foolishness of, of the message preached, or literally through the foolishness of the just simply the proclamation to save those. Proclamation is not the same thing as debate. It's saying, this is what God did. You're sinners. Christ came into the world, paid for your sins. He died on the cross for his sins. He was buried. He rose again. And you can be forgiven and righteous with God for believing that. That's the gospel message. It's proclaimed. It's not something that you debate to demonstrate that it's a better message than something that the world might resort to. And Demas loved that age. And he went back to Thessalonica. He's going to retrace where Paul had been. And he's going to start this over again. And he's going to go back and try it. The world's, or the, in this case, the present age's method. Now, I start off by asking, can it affect the way we minister? Yeah, because what did Demas do? Paul doesn't say this with regard to Crescens and Titus. Paul had sent these people to different places, but Demas, he says, he deserted me. He abandoned me. He ran out on me because he wanted to use a different method than Paul was using. Look where Paul's method got him. He's in prison for the second time at least. And not only is he in prison, but he's on death row. Let's go try a better method. There is no better method than the one God uses. God does not use debate. We've already established that. He doesn't use that. It makes it very plain over there in 1 Corinthians. That's not what God does. He uses the proclamation. That's how he saves people. It doesn't say he saves some by the proclamation. That's how he does it. That's what it says. Plain and simple. 
We may reject that, but then we're rejecting what God said. You're not rejecting uh, an idea that I've come up with or somebody else. So yeah, when we resort to the world's methods, it can cause divisions between believers. Might even make a believer, like Demas, do what? Abandon. Abandon a co-worker, which Paul said at one time, Demas was his co-worker. But becoming enamored with this idea of being able to debate and resort to the world's methods, Demas abandoned Paul. We don't want to abandon other believers. We want to stick together. We want to work together with our brothers and sisters in Christ in proclaiming who Christ is, in teaching one another the things that we need, in encouraging and helping one another, serving one another. That's what we want to do. We don't want to abandon. We want to be together with other saints the way God planned. And with that, I encourage you to have a good day in the Lord, and thank you for joining me.